The JavaScript problem we are going to address in this tutorial was submitted by one of our viewers of the channel. I felt it was a great example for discussing scope and the nature of objects. So those are the topics we will address with this problem. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. In addressing this problem, we will take a look at it in pieces. I want to first take a look at a simple version of a function that takes a parameter and makes a change. This will allow us to talk about scope. Then we will address more about the nature of objects. So let's jump in. So here's a simple function. We take a parameter and then we add one to that parameter. That's basically what we're doing. Down here, we declare a variable, VAL, we set it to 10. Then we call the function passing in that variable, and then we log to the console. Now, those of you that are familiar with scope will know what this will return. But if JavaScript is new to you, spend some time thinking about what this will return. What is this going to be when we log to the console? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we get 10. 10 is the number logged to the console. That is the value that we established here. It doesn't change. Now, an important thing to remember about this, this variable here is a new variable. It is not the same variable we established here. A variable is declared as this parameter. So this receives the value of 10, and then we add 1 to that. This ends up being 11. So if we do a console log inside of this test function, it will show 11. However, the console log is outside of the function. The scope of this variable is the function. So setting this parameter here is very similar to declaring a variable with let inside of the function. Let indicates that the scope is the curly braces. So the curly braces are the scope of that function. So this console log statement is outside of that scope. So it's not going to find this variable to log to the console. It's going to find this variable because VAL is in the same scope that the console log statement is in. And even though we invoke the function in that same scope, it passes the value to this new variable. Don't let the fact that they have the same name confuse you. And that's sometimes what can hang people up. So that is an important consideration about scope that you need to be aware of. Now, I have a more complete tutorial on scope that I'll link to in the description. Now, we're going to change this function just a bit. I'm now going to pass in an array, and then we're going to change that array by using push to add another value to it. Okay, so let me set up the array down here. Simple as that. Three numbers inside the array. I'm going to go ahead and use the same variable name like we did before. Now remember, that doesn't matter. They're still different variables. Now, what is going to happen this time? What will we see when we log to the console this array? Let me go ahead and save that and let's take a look. Notice now we have a modified array. We have the four included in it. So why did that happen? If this is the scope of my ARR and we change it here, why are we seeing that change down here when this is outside the scope? Well, this has to do with the nature of objects. Arrays are objects in JavaScript. And objects are mutable, meaning we can change them. And because they're mutable, 
when this array is passed in, it includes a reference to the original object. And so when we go ahead and make a change to that object, it's changing the original object that this variable references and this variable references. They both reference the same object. So when we log to the console, we see that change. We see that change has already happened. And so that has to do with the nature of objects more so than the definition of scope. It doesn't mean that scoping doesn't apply. Scoping still applies. It's just that the nature of objects cause this to occur. And we see the change when we log to the console. All right, now we're going to take a look at both of those together, scope and the nature of objects. I'm going to copy in another problem here. So now here's our next problem. This is going to deal with scope and the nature of objects together. And this was the original problem that was submitted by one of our viewers. Based upon what we saw here because of the nature of objects, what is going to happen with this problem down here? That's the main question. So taking a look at this function, basically what we're doing is we're passing in two arrays, array one, array two. Now remember, these are different variables. Even though they have the same name, they are different variables in a different scope. Then inside of the function, we assign array two to array one. So when we log to the console, what are we going to see? Should we see this? Well, think about that for a minute. Let me save this and let's take a look. As you can see, we are seeing one, two, three. We are not seeing four and five. So now why did that happen? If we have a reference to the original object in both of these variables, why did that happen? Well, this has to do with scope. So we're not mutating an object here. We're not making changes to an object with this statement. Basically what we're trying to do is to reassign this variable to a new value. And it does that. It reassigns. If we do a console log statement here, you'll see that it is four and five. So let's go ahead and save that and take a look at that. So there we get four and five. So it does reassign that variable. However, remember the scope of this variable is this function and that is all. And so when we log to the console, we're outside of that scope. And so what variable does it pick up? It picks up this one. And that references the original object, which was never modified. It was never modified. So it displays one, two, and three. So reassigning a variable is not mutating an object. Up here, we were mutating that object. And so we saw the change to the original object. We're not mutating an object here. We're simply trying to reassign a variable. So scoping applies. That change is only made within the scope of this function. Therefore, we only see it in this console log statement. We do not see it in this console log statement because it's referring to a different variable. It's referring to this one, which still has the one, two, three array. So there is some interaction between scope and the nature of objects. And I hope Seeing that has helped you solidify better scoping and the nature of objects. Now, I have a number of tutorials on objects that go into this in more detail, and I'll link to that playlist in the description section as well. Now, before we are done here, please hit the like button. It can help others find this tutorial. If you would like to become a patron of this channel, I would appreciate the support. You can follow a link in the description, and you can also contribute by visiting my website. If you want to dive deeply into JavaScript, I provided discount links to all of my courses in the description section. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button or click the circle link on the left, one of my face. Also click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. You can also click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away, 
or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com, for a complete list of tutorials and other resources. Thanks for watching.